Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about why you should choose HTMX for your next web-based side project and ditch the crufty multi-page application or your complex single page application. So I build a lot of side projects and I'm always on the lookout for technologies and paradigms and architectures that allow me to build them faster and cheaper at a similar quality. For the last several months, I've been experimenting with building web apps with Low.js tools like HTMX and Alpine. So in this post, I'm gonna share why I think HTMX is a great choice for building web apps faster and cheaper and why it's now a core part of my tech stack, the ham stack, which I use to start all my projects. Okay, first we're gonna start off comparing multi-page applications and single page applications, which is basically how all web apps have been built um, for the past like ah, 15, 20 ish years. And so here's kind of like an overview um, of this. And basically we see multi-page applications are over here. Um, it's got pretty low complexity, so pretty simple to build. Um, and it can do some decent user experiences, but we've got you know a big gap here in the ceiling. And this isn't to say that multi-page applications can't do these things, but to get from here to here is very hard. Um, and you know the complexity would probably be like way up here uh, to get even to like right here. Really good for these kind of like simple, easy user experiences, but very hard to get the, the user experiences like way, way up here. And so we have single page applications over here, which has really high user experience. It can do these really rich, modern feeling applications, but the complexity is pretty high. Um, and a lot of this just comes from like the abstractions it uses, kind of how you build the thing and how that works at scale, the mental overhead you have to think about because you are doing all these kind of background tricks to make it feel rich and modern. And so this is like it as a general and so in the next few sections, we're gonna talk about like why uh, I believe these are, are correct um, and, and how they got here, why they work this way um, before we kind of go in and introduce HTMX. All right, so let's start off with multi-page applications. So in the beginning, we had these multi-page applications and basically the way this works is like each URL goes to a web page and then this web page is gonna be rendered server-side and sent back to the user. This is what my website here is doing, it's just doing simple server-side rendering. This is how most web pages were built for a very long time. Now, the problem with this is that when you need to update something on the page, let's say you have like a widget that does like a page counter or something like that, or maybe a user like saves a field that's supposed to update some data in a table or something like that, um, then you need to refresh the page in some way because obviously the old stuff is not equal to the, the new stuff. With multi-page applications, the way it used to be built, you basically had to refresh the entire page in order to get that new data on the page. And the problem with this is that web pages might have a lot of stuff. Like if you're doing a table, there might be like 10 to 100 rows on the page and you only updated one, but now you've got to update the entire table and whatever JavaScript is on the page and like, you know, whatever database accesses you've got to do on the back end, all of this stuff you got to redo. And so it works fine. Like, you know, operationally it works, it does the right thing, but it gives you this very slow and clunky feel because you're reloading everything on the page, doing all the work all over again, when all you did was change one little thing. And so for like an example of this, um, the best thing I can think of is like a state government website. Like if you need to file your taxes or like go to the DMV or something, um, you know, today they're mostly still these old school MPAs. And so they kind of have that like long refresh. When you're reloading a page, it takes a while. When you're doing, filling out a form or something, it like goes to like a weird page. Like it just feels old and clunky compared to like web apps you're used to, you know, paying for and using on, on sites today. And so when you look at the pros and cons, as we kind of saw in the graph earlier, you know, MPAs are pretty simple to build, so that's that's really good. But the cons is that, you know, they feel slow and clunky due to these refreshes. And so they're not giving the best user experience. They're just, mm, it just doesn't feel great. Okay, so now on to single page applications. And so to solve this problem of like, you know, the user experiences just wasn't great. It was felt clunky, you know, it just took a while. We're doing extra work we didn't need to. Single page applications were created. And basically the way this works is when you hit a URL, it's gonna load this like large JS payload that's gonna contain a bunch of different like app logic and framework logic so it can instantiate itself, all this stuff. And what that stuff is gonna do is basically it's going to take over the page rendering for this application. So it's going to basically 
you're not going to be using URLs to hit new web pages. Actually, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be telling the page, hey, go update itself. And it's going to internally simulate, if you will, um, going to the web page. And it's going to be like, this is how I would render this. And this is how I make it look like a web page. And this is what the, the page should look like. So a lot of the stuff is now happening on the client with these spas. And this is actually going to end up feeling a lot better and more modern. Um, and the reason is because it's going to be using internal state internally. It's, you know, it's simulating those page loads. But by doing that, it's able to basically do data transfers um, in the background, and then it's able to figure out what on the page actually needs to change. And so if you only you know, update one thing on the page, it can figure out, oh, I only need to actually change one thing on the web page I'm, I'm showing the user. And so it feels very fast. And that's why these you know, single page applications are able to give that much higher user experience. And this is generally why most apps and websites today feel like this because a lot more are choosing these single page applications and doing this kind of smarter re-rendering. And so when you look at the pros and cons, you know, spas are able to provide these really rich modern user experiences. Now this doesn't come out, come without like downsides. And really the downside of spas is complexity at scale. And I think there's like a few main reasons for this is probably out of scope for like the downfall of spas. Um, but the main ones that I've seen is one that dealing with data transfers, like even though you're doing it in the background and it can be faster, it's still a problematic a little bit. Um, you still have the overfetching, underfetching issues. GraphQL is built to solve this. Uh, we've tried to do all this like gRPC stuff, all this kind of compression to make it smaller. But at the end of the day, the problem is we are basically using the data to render in a place where we don't control the data. And so we have all sorts of under overfetching issues. The next one is the abstractions. At the end of the day, everything's hypermedia on the on the internet. It's all just HTML. But when you do this kind of spa thing, you're building the simulated world on top of this. And that just provides a lot of abstractions and complexities that don't actually exist in the core domain, which is hypermedia. And the next one is app logic payload sizes. Lots of problems with client side rendering. Yes, it's faster, but like SEO sucks, hard for things to bot it, oftentimes hard to um, unit test this kind of things integration test. Um, and the initial page loads of a lot of these pages are actually quite slow. And so they do all sorts of caching to try and make it feel fast. But at the end of the day, it's not fast. Um, and so, you know, for your tiny side project probably doesn't make sense, but at enterprise level, really feel in the pains. Um, so yeah, probably rant on this for a long time, but that's, that's the general gist. And what I want you to take away from this really is, is this kind of comparison here. So multi-page applications, they're simple to build, but they're really hard to get rich modern user experiences. And for single page applications, they are complex to build, but can achieve these rich modern user experiences. So if we go back up to you now the graph we had here, this is what we see. MPAs can build, you know, small, simplish websites very simply, um, but it just cannot achieve the user experiences spas can get, but they have the downside of added complexity. Okay, so now Let's talk about where HTMX fits in the spectrum. And basically the way I think about it is I place it right here in the middle. And so it's a little bit more complex than multi-page applications, but it's able to achieve much higher user experience for that extra tiny little bit of complexity. And if we compare this to spas, it can't quite get the full rich user experiences that you can with spas, but it's able to achieve most of the richness, the user experience that we're used to in modern apps with very little comparative complexity. And so to me, this is really the power of HTMX. It's not gonna win out in any of these things compared to you know pure MPA or pure SPA, but the balance is quite good for most applications in my experience. So let's talk a little bit about how it's able to achieve this and why I think this is probably the correct um, kind of you know relative scale. Also shout out to RHTMX where I first saw uh, the graph like this. It's really good. I think this is probably one of the best ways to explain um, these things. So HTMX has been around for several years. It first started as intercooler. I think it turned into HTMX like 2021, 2022. But really this past year, 2023, 2024, um, has been when it's really gained mass hype in the hype cycle. And, you know, I don't really fall for a lot of this hype stuff. I'm kind of usually a skeptical person, but I think that the hype for HTMX is not unfounded. I think, I think it actually is founded in some core grain of truth in there. 
And I think the reason is that HTMX often is going to allow you to build those modern web apps that we've kind of come to know faster and cheaper than you are able to with the spa. So no longer do you have to reach for the complexity of a spa just to get a modern web app. It's now quite a lot simpler to build that thing much cheaper and faster. And this is like a super deep dive into HTMX versus spa. So if you're interested more in that, you can check out that video here. Um, but the general gist is that HTMX extends HTML so that it can do partial page reloads. And that's how it's kind of bridging this gap. And basically the way it works is this. So any element, any just kind of HTML element can specify how it can retrieve up-to-date data and when it should do that. Um, so this could be like an event that happens in the in the window, um, it can listen to that and then trigger. Maybe it's like uh, something that the user does. It can figure out, it can go go do that thing. And so it knows how to get up-to-date data and when it should be doing that. Now the flip side of this is that it can then also specify what should it do with that new data. So, okay, the user clicks a button, I go get the new information. What am I doing with this? And you're able to do all sorts of things like say, hey, go replace this element on the page um, or go replace these other elements or go trigger this other event to go do this other thing. And so you can pretty easily see that with like just a few additions to HTML, just a few extensions to allow it to get up to date data and swap things out. It's able to do these partial page updates without the complexity of a spa and without needing to refresh the whole page. And this is important because if we look back at the multi-page applications versus you know single page applications comparison, we can see that really the lack of partial page reloads is the main thing that's holding multi-page applications back. That's why its ability to build rich user experiences was so low because it just needed a refresh for literally everything, which is just gonna take a long time and it's gonna kill the user experience. And so adding this capability into a multi-page application, often you're gonna be using HTMX with multi-page applications to achieve that simplicity um, while also getting the richness of the user experience. It, it allows you to get most of that rich modern user experience that spas are allowing you to do with a complexity that really approximates that of an MPA. Okay, HTMX for side projects. So the goal of a side project is often just to build the thing. You likely don't have a team of engineers or a war chest of VC money to do so. It's just you and your computer. And so lowering the cost of building and both time and money is crucial to making a side project successful. And really when we think about like ROI, this is really ROI. Um, one of the best ways to improve that is just to lower your costs. And you know, I say this is for side projects, but really if you think about about any business setting, any kind of way that you're building a project, this is always the case you're trying to max ROI. And so from my perspective, HTMX provides a really great balance between allowing you to build modern apps with very low complexity. And complexity honestly is usually the thing that hurts us at scale. And so if we can lower complexity, this usually leads to lowering time and money cost. And this is all the reason why it's become a core part of my tech stack which you can learn more about in the hamstack. So if you like this post, you might also like why I think HTMX is better than spas and how HTMX allows you to build modern web apps faster and cheaper than bloated client-side spa frameworks. You might also be interested in how I use HTMX with F-sharp and simple interactive islands with F-sharp and HTMX. And you might also be interested in other ways I'm thinking about building faster, cheaper side projects in three areas I'm exploring to build more side projects faster and cheaper in 2024. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.